Hello and welcome to this Touchstone for Thursday, April 15th. It is not tax day. Who knew? We are uh, in such a strange time in such a strange year. A week ago, of course, I announced that I would be transferred to another parish. Uh, I will be up in the Berkeley neighborhood of Denver, uh, just a little further northwest than the Highlands neighborhood. And it's been such an emotional week for me, and I was exhausted last week, and I've been exhausted. Just, uh, you're telling a lot of people, and uh, you're part of their reaction over and over again. And so, you know, this week, as I'm starting to move out of that fog, and not that they hadn't told me a little ahead of time, but the, the telling others was incredibly emotional. And I sat down to do the touchstone this week, and I just had nothing to say. And I think it's the first time all year where I just couldn't get the readings of the day to work. And part of it is, and many of you have heard me say this over the years, that the daily readings for Easter are among my absolute least favorite. Uh, they are not because I dislike the themes, but because it's out of John's Gospel and he writes these long, long dialogues on a single topic. And so, as you're preaching the Easter season, you will get something like the vine and the branches and the branches and the vine, and it will go on for days. And uh, <clears throat> then it might move to, I and the Father are one as you and I will be one, and I want us to be one as we were one. And that'll go on for another week and a half. It, it's the Easter season. And they're very heady and theological, and that's not the space that I'm in. And I suspect that from the reactions uh, I encountered this weekend, it's not the space any of us are in. Deep theology is fun, but sometimes we have to look to scriptures to speak to a moment. And they tend to be the more emotional, the more poetic scriptures. And I wanted to go to one of my favorites this week. It's not in the liturgy anytime soon. It is the Old Testament reading, so many of you know it. It is from the third chapter of Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to read bits and pieces of it, though it will be included in the touchstone. But you've all heard most of it. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to give birth, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. And something we learned this year during COVID a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces. Most of these couplets are something we like, something we don't, something we don't, something we like, back and forth. And I think we sometimes get into that older theology that God is somehow scheduling the world and there's no free will he scheduled you know this is the year to be a far from embraces and maybe next year will be a year for embracing and I don't think that's what it's really saying I think it's still absolutely a hymn to free will and it reminds us that God can be found in all of those times that the time to mourn the time to scatter stones, the time to be far from embraces, all those times that we see as negative, a time to tear down. It's not that God plans them. It's that God has seen the world coming since he created it. 
when we are in a time that we would call crisis, that we would call tragic, it is not an indication that the world and the universe are spinning off its hinges and God is no longer in control. This amazing passage from Ecclesiastes reminds us that there is a time for all things. And God has planned time for all things. And in these moments of transition, when we think, where is God? I, I have to wonder, do, do we think God is only, only the God of easy times? God is only the God of enjoyment? God is only the God of the status quo? I think God is maybe for us even a more visceral experience in transition. Transition is going to be my keyword for the next several weeks. But I think transition is a word that is mired in human psychology, which I love. I love that study. But I want to move myself towards the word of Scripture, transfiguration, which really speaks not just of the transition going on around me, but how we change who we are in the world for others, how we are seen, how we are experienced. The next 12 weeks are going to be emotionally draining. I will be balancing, trying to get my head into a space of excitement and forward vision for what's ahead, an honoring and holding what is right now at this moment, and a remembering and giving gratitude for everything that has come in the last 17 years. That's a lot of transition, hopefully at least a little transfiguration. I would ask that as we all move forward in the next 12 weeks, that we try to name this time. If you get a chance to go through this third chapter of Ecclesiastes, you know, what is this? Is this a time to build? Is it a time to heal? Is it feeling like a time to rend? that's going to mean we have a time of sowing ahead of us? Is it a time to sit in silence? Some of that time will need silence. Is it a time to speak and to share? Is it a time of peace? Is it a time of war? I, I would hate to think that. But these first, especially these first eight verses, play with it. Come up with phrases that aren't there. Is it you know, a time to deepen connections? Is it a time to change? Is it a, a time to look around and evaluate? The eight verses that we love from Ecclesiastes are not exhaustive. I think as a community, we need to write many other verses and name this time name this transition, name this year of COVID, name what's coming ahead. In our Hebrew roots of Christianity, there is such power given to the word. There is such power given to the stories we tell. There is such power given to the narrative we embrace. How will we name this time? So this week I want you to sit with that. I'm actually choosing a piece of music that has almost no lyric presence. It's not quite that verbal. You know, it's more of a meditation. And I explain a little more in the text of the touchstone. How do we get out of our heads and experience this liminal moment? How do we name it? Do we fit it into this amazing, well-known passage of Ecclesiastes? Do we have to write beyond the borders of that little pericope?
to name what we're feeling, to name the transitions we're going through, and to know that why God hasn't planned this moment to, to teach anyone a lesson, God will give us the grace to learn from it, and nothing happening in these days is surprising to God. The universe is created with room for every experience. And as we name this one of transition, gratitude, wonder, courage, and grace, we will find ways to continue going through it together. God bless, be safe, and be